am Jeff Teichert. I've been a lawyer for 16 years, and I have an advanced law degree from George Washington University with highest honors, partially emphasizing English and early American legal history. I'm here today to talk to you about something very important to me, and that is how we interpret the Constitution. The great justices Holmes and Brandeis said, that the court's power of judicial review is, quote, not an exercise of the powers of a super legislature. When a new Supreme Court nominee comes before the Senate, we often hear a lot of talk about legislating from the bench, or we hear about what a particular nominee might be for or against. But this is a very wrong-headed way of thinking about the role of courts in American life. As Alexander Hamilton said in the 78th Federalist Paper, it can be of no weight to say that courts, on the pretense of repugnancy to the Constitution, may substitute their own pleasure to the constitutional intentions of the legislature. The courts must declare the sense of the law, and if they should be disposed to exercise will instead of judgment, the consequence would equally be the substitution of their pleasure to that of the legislative body. So judges are not supposed to be for or against particular policies. They should only be exercising judgment about what the law means and in appropriate cases whether that law is constitutional. They should interpret the law as it was intended, not as they might personally wish it were. So let's talk briefly about the principles that should be applied in interpreting and understanding the Constitution. The first fundamental principle is that words have meaning. Now that might seem obvious, but if we aspire to be a government of laws and not of men, we must begin by assuming that the law has a fixed and determinate meaning independent of the judge applying it. This goes against the popular notion of a living constitution, the idea that the constitution was framed in sort of broad, ambiguous terms, allowing it to morph and change with the times. The second principle is that the text of the Constitution itself is the best evidence of what the framers meant. The third principle is that ambiguities in the text should be resolved by examining the purposes for which the Constitution was enacted. James Madison said, and please listen to this, if the sense in which the Constitution was accepted and ratified by the nation is not the guide to expounding it, There can be no security for a faithful exercise of its powers. The fourth fundamental principle is to follow precedents that provide plausible interpretations of the text. The principle of following precedent is an important tradition. It follows from the common law tradition of our English forebears, and it helps to provide stability in the way our Constitution is interpreted over the centuries, but it is not absolute. As the great Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter said, the ultimate touchstone of constitutionality is the Constitution itself and not what we, meaning the Supreme Court, have said about it. President Kennedy said that the same revolutionary beliefs for which our forebears fought are still at issue around the globe. The belief that the rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. I fear that these same revolutionary beliefs are not only still at issue around the globe, but here in what we Americans affectionately like to call the land of the free. Thomas Jefferson said, our peculiar security is in the possession of a written constitution. Let us not make it a blank paper by construction. As Jefferson's plea echoes down through the centuries, I submit to you that we have a solemn obligation to pass the great constitution of our heritage, not a blank paper, down to our children. Now why should the average American care about interpreting the constitution or the philosophy of a particular judicial nominee? We should care because judges are the keepers of our constitution and thereby of our freedom. A house cannot long survive on a foundation of shifting sand. 
and liberty has no refuge in a constitution that changes its meaning according to the whims of a few fallible human beings who are unelected and unaccountable. I'm posting this video to help rekindle the fire of liberty in the hearts of our people, to spread the love of our Constitution. Please pass this video on. Post it on your Facebook page. Let people know how much this means to you and how much it matters to all.